Okay, so this will be a really quick talking video. I just want to talk about the app router. I have been playing around with the app router on a side project that uses Supabase. And I want to kind of give my initial thoughts on the app router now that it's like in stable. Because I have some opinions on it. Um, for the most part, prior to the app router, we had the pages router, right? And all of my other projects were built using the pages router. Like for example, if I were to load up my icon generator, this is using the T3 stack with Prisma and we have the pages directory, right? So if we go here, we have pages. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the name conventions of these files first of all, okay? I personally liked how the, the pages router named the files. If you go over to the app router approach now, let's look at all these different files. Okay, we have page.tsx, page tsx, page tsx, page tsx, page tx, tsx. I've, I've been kind of complaining on Twitter about this, um, but when you have like a couple of these pages opened up, and we'll just go ahead and open up some other stuff too. Oh wait, here's another page.tsx. Okay, so when you have a lot of these open up, it's kind of a little bit harder to figure out what page you're trying to find when every single thing in your top tab says page.tsx. I know you have like the directory here where it says forgot password, but in terms of like the approach with the pages router, it's much easier just to read community or feedback. I could just read that. I know it's, it's there. A lot of people say, well, you should just use command P fuzzy searching and now you don't have to worry about it, right? Even that it's easier on the pages router. So if I were to type in like privacy policy, first result comes up. So for the app directory, when you, you can't just type in page because now you have like a hundred of them, right? So you kind of have to do extra steps. For example, if I want to open up the update password, I say update and then I say page. Okay. And now I have access to that page. And then typically in the drop down, you just have like a bunch of pages. Okay. It, this is a small complaint. I mean, you can get used to it, but overall it's kind of annoying personally. I think the file based routing does have limitations. And I think a lot of other frameworks, I think even Svelte or solid start might do the same approach where like you have the same named file. So I'm not a fan, but other than that, I kind of like the approach that every page is server side rendered by default. If you were to compare the app directory's server-side render by default against the, the way that was done with the pages directory. So for the pages directory, every page is kind of client side by default, unless you export a get server-side props, and then it changes it into a server-side rendered function. Now, depending on your thoughts, if you should be doing client-side rendering, or if you should be doing like server-side rendering, server-side rendering does have a lot of benefits. For example, when I needed to basically set some metadata headers on my endpoints, one thing I needed to do, like if you ever need to like dynamically change these, let's just go to the icons um, page, which I have here. All of these metadata tags are dynamic, right? They changed based on the ID of the string here. So because of that, I do need to export a get server side props and basically take that image ID and pass it in. I will say there's a bunch of boilerplate for doing this. Like I will say that the app router is actually a lot nicer because I can just do async functions directly in my pages. Um, so for example, if I were to go to, let's just go to my layout here. Notice that this is just a server side rendered page. This is the layout basically. And I can just do a wait directly in here. I don't have to have some external get server side props. I like this a lot better. I think it makes the code easier to write. You don't have to jump back and forth between functions. You don't have to worry about passing props from one function so that you can insert them as uh, properties inside your page. Definitely a win here. I do like this approach. And overall, I mean, the server-side rendering, you end up finding small things that just make more sense with the server-side rendering. For example, in this application, I have a nav bar. And if you don't do server-side rendering for this user session and pass it to the nav bar, basically what happens is your page loads and then you'll see a flicker on the top right where it'll say sign in, and then that'll kind of go away and you'll see a picture of your icon. If you do server-side rendering for your nav bars and things depend on session or like your username or something, by default, you won't have this flicker, right? Because the user is defined, the nav bar gets rendered on the, the backend for its initial run, and that data is gonna be populated correctly based on conditionals, right? So the user will be passed in on the server-side rendering, rendering process, and that'll show a drop down by default. You won't have that weird flicker. I do like that a lot. So I do think server-side rendering does have um, a lot of benefits. And of course there's like search engine optimization that we haven't even talked about. Um, I will say that the, the way that you do APIs for the app directory is a little bit different. 
Um, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it yet. So before I used to have like request and response as like parameters here. Um, let's see if I can just find one real quick. So for example, like here's an endpoint that had request and response. This is kind of familiar with Express and how a lot of other node frameworks do it. But it was kind of hacky and ugly, the fact that we had to do like if rec method is equal to post here, and then, you know, check if it was a git or a patch or a put. Not a fan of that. So I think, again, the app directory, it's a big win for just exporting the function here without having to like bring in a third party library to do that switch statement for you or doing the, the switch statement for you yourself. That's a big win, in my opinion. So some things I don't like about the, the route handlers for the app directory is like, the request used to have some really useful methods on it. Like this would be like rec.params or rec.query. And then you'd already have access to the query string parameters. Now you have to basically take the URL, pass it to like a URL here and do a bunch of extra boilerplate just to get the search parameters. I understand that they're trying to be like more in line with the conventions for the front end. I think these data structures are actually things that are found in the browser, so it's like kind of consistent, which is good. I mean, that's a good argument to have your back end and your front end be consistent. You're using the same type of data structures. But I do miss the the ease of just like doing request.query, and then you have access to those you know, query strings out of the box. Um, and then also returning from an API, a little bit different. Instead of saying response.json, you actually have to create like a response object and then like place JSON on it and set headers on it. And then that's what you return from the object. That's not too bad. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. Um, I'm trying to figure out what else could we potentially talk about. I haven't even dived into like layouts and stuff or like these, these head files. I'm not sure how I feel about splitting up all of these things in the separate files. I mean, like technically we could have just kept them all in the same file and just like exported functions. Um, now a lot of people ask me like, most of the content I've done has been TRPC and like the T3 stack stuff. And they're kind of curious, like, is, is TRPC still necessary? Like, is this a better approach? I don't think I'm going to, like, the only reason I'm doing the, the app router right now is because A, the T3 stack setup, I don't think they've actually gotten TRPC fully working with the app directory. Maybe they have, I haven't checked in a while. But the, the main reason um, I'm kind of still waiting on using the app directory is because the server actions are still alpha. I'm kind of slow at adopting new things, especially if they have the label alpha on them, because I, I just don't want to waste time going back and refactoring code um, because like their signatures change or the function definitions change. I'd rather just use something stable so I don't have to like go back later and maybe change it. So as far as like, can you still use a T3 stack and TRPC with the pages directory? I'll say absolutely. I think this is still a good solution. Um, I will say that now navigating the Next.js documenta documentation is kind of hard because when you start searching for answers, you'll start reading the docs and then you'll realize, oh, I'm actually on the pages docs. I'm not on the app router docs. And like that has screwed me over a couple times where like I'm reading blog posts, I'm reading docs and it's like, oh, well, this is showing me the new approach or, oh, this is showing me the old approach, which is kind of painful, but that's kind of just, you know, the way it works when new paradigms come out for frameworks and libraries. Overall, I do plan to switch over to the app directory. So right now you're looking at my icon generator code. I'm not gonna intentionally go and change this all to be the app router. I think keeping it as pages is fine until the next team comes out and says that we're gonna deprecate pages. I have no uh, real reason or argument to like refactor an existing code base to use the app router. But if you're starting a new project, brand new project, I think using the app router would be nice. But again, like I really like the autocomplete that TRPC gives you, the built-in Zod validation that TRPC gives you. And I don't know if there's a very easy way to hook that in to the app directory approach. Leave a comment if I'm wrong, like feel free to correct me. But I will say whenever the server actions get out of alpha and they're stable, I will probably switch over to using the app directory because I think that would be the point where TRPC is basically obsolete because you can basically invoke methods directly from your front end code, get that type safety out of the box. And I do believe um, Theo has like a library that hooks in the Zod with your server actions that makes like validation super easy as well. Josh tried coding as another YouTuber. I think he just made a video of how he's like not using TRPC, using server actions. 
Again, I'm just more hesitant of adopting anything that says alpha, so I'm going to hold off. But overall, I do like the app directory. I think it's other than like my small little complaints about like how the page is named everywhere the same. It's kind of annoying. Um, overall, I think it is an improvement and I think it does give a lot more flexibility if you buy into like every route is basically server rendered by default. Because as I build larger applications, I realize that like I really need those extra features that server side rendering gives me. Um, and client side rendering has a lot of like more pain for the users of like, you know, the flashing, like I talked about. Anyway, I think I'm kind of just rambling at this point. I'm sure there's stuff that I didn't even mention about the app directory versus pages directory. Uh, I didn't really prepare that well for this talk. Like I always never prepare for any of my talks, but if you guys have any, um, suggestions or comments on, do you like the app directory or do you still like the pages directory? Leave a comment below. Maybe we can kind of discuss about it. Other than that, uh, yeah, if you want to join my Discord, the link to my Discord is in the description below where you can kind of hang out with some other developers and ask questions. And like always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Have a good day and happy coding.